video is sponsored by World of Warships, a free-to-play game available on PC. New content is released every month, and this month only you can go to battle as Vic Rattlehead or Dave Mustaine, the legendary lead of Megadeth. World of Warships has superb graphics with more than 40 unique maps with dynamic weather and new water effects and textures. There are multiple ship classes to choose from, from history's iconic battleships and aircraft carriers to cruisers and submarines. World of Warships is a passionate and dedicated fan base. Join the action in-game and find your community in World of Warships. Did we mention that World of Warships is also available on consoles? September 2023 is World of Warships' 8th birthday, so join in the celebrations and start playing now. See the link in the description box below and click on the promo code MEGADEF and receive a huge starter pack, including 200 doubloons, 500,000 credits, 7 days premium account time, Vic Rattlehead commander and a ship. World of Warships, get it now. The citizens of neutral nations and of countries in alliance with Japan often suffered badly at the hands of Japanese military and naval forces. If the Japanese perceived the tiniest threat from an individual or group, their response was usually extremely violent and often murderous. The case in question was the disposal at sea of over 40 German nationals in New Guinea in 1943 by the Imperial Japanese Navy. The Germans in question, Catholic priests and nuns, and Protestant missionaries ministering to the local population would have been, because of their nationality, under the protection of the Nazi regime. At that time, an ally of Japan, following the September 1940 Tripartite Pact, signed in Berlin between Germany, Italy and Japan, creating the Axis Partnership. The Catholic priests, monks and nuns, as religious representatives, were also under the protection of the Vatican in Rome, a neutral nation at war with no one. These legal niceties did not unduly influence the local Japanese naval command in the decision to kill the Germans. Based at Wiwak in New Guinea, the Vicariat of Central New Guinea was led by Bishop Josef Lurks, and around the region the Divine Word missionaries had been quietly carrying out their work to convert the local tribal peoples to Christianity when the Japanese invaded. The Germans had been in the region for a considerable time, since before the First World War, when northern New Guinea had been a German colony. The Treaty of Versailles handed the colony to Australia, under whose control the territory was when the Japanese invaded. The Catholic priests, monks and nuns had maintained good relations with the local indigenous people, but with the arrival of the Japanese in April 1942, all that was about to change. For several decades, German missionaries had worked hard not only to convert the locals to Christianity, but they had also endeavoured to improve healthcare facilities for the indigenous tribal peoples, constructing small cottage hospitals, and educating local women in childbirthing methods and other health-related issues. The Japanese, seemingly unable, or more likely unwilling, to differentiate between the civilians of friendly and neutral nations from the civilians of enemy powers, immediately ordered that Lurks and his missionaries be imprisoned in an internment camp on Kareru Island. Allied pilots who had been shot down throughout the region were hiding in the jungle, anxious not to be apprehended by the Japanese, and some had attempted to contact the white missionaries in the hope of gaining aid. Japanese fleet headquarters decided to move the missionaries from Kiriru to Manus. After a short while, the Imperial Navy, whose forces constituted the local garrison, removed the Catholic missionaries from their camp. They were herded aboard the destroyer Akikaze, whose skipper was Lieutenant Commander Sabe Surukichi. The Japanese then set about destroying all traces of the missionaries' work that had been carefully constructed over the previous decades. Truckloads of Japanese sailors were dispatched to the mission plantations, where they burned down the churches, clinics and houses, bayoneted converts to death, and made sure that the work of the Divine Word organization was obliterated from the face of the earth, as it represented another unacceptable face of white colonialism that did not fit with the Japanese attempt to create their awkwardly named Greater East Asia Co-Prosperity Sphere. By the end of the war, this scorched-earth policy had wiped out over 90% of the Catholic mission plantations. Because almost nothing was known of these crimes until after the Second World War, neither the German nor the Vatican authorities made official complaints to Tokyo regarding the behaviour of their forces. 
The Akikaze steamed towards Rabaul in New Britain, calling at Manus and the Admiralty Islands to pick up more intern missionaries, this time a group of 20 Protestants. On Manus, relations between the Japanese and the local missionaries had been excellent, a very unusual situation for whites under Japanese control. Manus was garrisoned by only 20 special naval landing troops under the command of Chief Petty Officer Ichinose Harukichi. It was said that Harukichi often invited the missionaries to dinner at his quarters and seemed to enjoy their company immensely. Dark forces at fleet headquarters were quietly conspiring to rid New Guinea of the whites the Japanese had inherited, plans that would go further than simply removing them from the area to internment elsewhere. The missionaries were suspected by the Japanese authorities of using concealed radio transmitters to report the movements of Imperial Navy ships to the Americans. The spying story was most probably concocted by the Toketai Naval Police as an excuse to dispose of the Germans, giving them a reason to kill them within Japanese military law. Forty German Catholics, including nuns and two young Chinese children, had boarded the Akikaze at Kireru Island, and another twenty Protestant civilians, accounts vary as to the exact numbers, were escorted aboard at Manus on the 17th of March 1943. Commander Surukichi, however, behaved well towards his captives, removing some of his crew from their quarters so the missionaries and children could be sheltered from Allied bombs should his ship have encountered enemy forces. The missionaries were fed, watered, and the ship's surgeon was ordered to attend to them. The Akikaze steamed to Kavieng and dropped anchor. No one left the warship and no one boarded her while she drifted around her cable. A small motor launch came alongside and a sealed envelope was delivered, with instructions that it was to be given only to Surukichi. The order came directly from 8th Fleet Headquarters. It instructed Surukichi to kill every civilian man, woman and child aboard the Akikaze and to dispose of their bodies at sea. Surukichi did not question the legality of this order, but he was visibly shaken. The Akikaze got underway again, and the skipper called an officer's meeting in the wardroom, where he disclosed to them the task his vessel had been given. Surukichi read the order aloud to the assembled officers, pale and with his hands shaking, and then told them that although the order was distasteful, it was nonetheless a direct order from fleet and therefore must be obeyed. He detailed more junior officers and NCOs to carry out the task. The Japanese immediately began to make preparations to dispose of the prisoners. On the destroyer's aft deck, a wooden scaffold was erected by the ship's carpenters and ropes prepared. A large sheet was then strung across the deck so that when the prisoners were led out from below, they would not see what was being done to their colleagues on the other side of the curtain. Thick woven matting was placed beneath the scaffold to soak up the blood. A group of riflemen and a light machine gun, manned by Sub-Lieutenant Takio, were made ready to kill the victims. The prisoners were herded out onto the deck in small groups under a heavy armed guard. One by one, beginning with the men, they were firstly asked some polite questions by an officer, including their name, nationality, marital status and age. This information was then entered on legal notepads, which subsequently disappeared. One by one, the victims, following a calm questioning, were led behind the curtain to their fate. Once behind the curtain, each prisoner was blindfolded, and ropes were attached to each of his or her wrists. Several Japanese sailors then pulled on the ropes in unison, which were all attached to the wooden scaffold, and struggling in agony, the prisoner was bodily hauled off the ground and suspended ready for execution. At a given signal, the destroyer was suddenly increased speed, the noise of the engines used by the Japanese to disguise the shots coming from behind the curtain. A four-man firing squad then took aim and dispatched the victim with a single volley, along with a burst from Lieutenant Takio's machine gun. Afterwards, the body was dropped to the deck, untied, and pitched over the stern of the ship as she continued on her way. Whether intentional or not, the nature of the prisoners' deaths suspended as if crucified was the final indignity to their beliefs. When all the male prisoners had been killed, it was the turn of the nuns and other women, two of whom were holding small Chinese babies in their arms. Ignoring their desperate pleas of mercy for the infants, the Japanese sailors wrenched the children from the nuns' arms and threw them overboard to drown. 
The women were then subjected to the same treatment as the men. After three hours, all the neutral civilians had been shot and thrown overboard. The scaffold was dismantled by the destroyer's crew and also dumped over the side along with the woven matting, now heavy with blood. A working party was then ordered to scrub the deck clean of any trace of what had been done before Commander Surukichi addressed his assembled crew. On pain of severe punishment, the officers and men of the Akikaze were sworn to secrecy concerning the massacre before Surukichi held a short religious service in honour of the recently deceased. The Akikaze continued on her way to Rabaul, her mission complete, berthing at 10pm that night. The Japanese method of killing captives far out to sea was not confined to the massacre committed aboard the Akikaze. There were several massacres of civilians from the occupied Dutch East Indies, and after the Japanese surrender in August 1945, many important documents implicating particular naval officers and vessels in atrocities were deliberately destroyed by the Japanese to prevent their falling into Allied hands. Few, if any, Japanese were ever prosecuted for such war crimes at sea, and as I said, it was only some time after the end of the war that the German authorities found out what actually occurred to their own citizens, who had been, ironically, allies of the Japanese during the war. Many thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my video channel, Mark Felton Productions. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.